Jeffrey is one of the most beautiful creatures I've ever encountered. More than five years of friendship, and I'm still only now discovering the many layers to this fascinating, fabulous person. His style hovers between glamour and androgyny. He is fierce, but still somehow vulnerable. CGTV, we're here with Kat Von D. You probably recognize her from her hit TV show, LA Inc. Uh, she's also a, a New York Times bestselling author in your new book, The Tattoo Chronicles. Tell me about this. A year in your life? It's just a year's worth of my uh, journal entries that I specifically did after every tattoo I would do. So I would tattoo somebody and then write about them afterwards. And uh, I just kind of did it as a form of self-therapy and, uh, you know, try not to take a lot of the heavy stories that come with some of the tattoos home with me at the end of the night. So. And then there's a lot, there's a lot of death throughout mm -hmm. your work. So did that take you a long time to sort of find a place that you could deal with that and not um, absorb it? Um... No, I, I've never actually had a problem talking about <laughs> death. I think that death is the one thing that unites us all as, um, I guess, mm -hmm. a species or something. But, you know, it's the one thing that we all are going to experience or have experienced in some way or another. And um, and I think people are kind of scared to talk about it, to be honest with you. And um, I think, I don't know, I think it's like it was a secret blessing that came with my job. <laughs> and uh, being able to do these portraits on people, um, it's not always a Debbie Downer, you know, there's... Oftentimes, where it's hilarious or funny or entertaining or more lighthearted, but I think the heavier ones, um, uh, they resonate with me a lot more. Do you feel like you leave a part of yourself on somebody when you've done these works on them? Yeah, I think it's an exchange of energy. So that there's um, I, I, there's not one tattoo that I don't remember. I may not remember um, your name, but I, I'll remember the tattoo. I've seen tattoos I've done when I was 15 years old, and I'm like. I remember that day. What's your favorite tattoo that you have? Or, or um, can you pick one on yourself? I don't know. I mean, people ask me that all the time, and I'm, I like like the portrait of my dad is one of my favorites. I love my dad, and um, yeah, cool. this is high school picture, and um, <laughs> it's nice, especially on this tour. I've been traveling so much, so being able to look down on him mm -hmm. and see my dad, it's it's a mm -hmm. nice reminder, you know. Mm -hmm. Just regular people, any regular tattoos, but there's also a big thread through this with uh, Nikki Six. Yeah. I mean, and that's you know that's not a low profile event in your life, right? So was that hard for you to include that? Did he have well, an issue with it or? No, I mean, really excited for for me, and I mean, if you've ever read his book, mm -hmm. it's it's in a diary format, and um, he's very open and honest about. Some, yeah, is he ever? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's like for him, he was he he's always thought that like my honesty and I guess realness uh, was something that is admirable or something but mm -hmm. I mean he's he was there during the entire process of the book so for him to see it come to life is equally as exciting for mm -hmm. him as it is for me. So if someone rings up your shop and wants to get tattooed by you how long of a waiting list is there? How long is By me? Team? Yeah. Um, well I mean my, my shop is a full shop like yeah. functioning shop so you can walk in there anytime and they have walk-ins there and I have mm -hmm. all my crew who I get tattooed by and I trust but with me it's a little bit harder because um, you know it's just me and my assistant who do all the emails and so it takes us a long time to get to your email but when we do it's only two months wait okay so it's not it's not definitely I'm not unattainable no. it's just it's just a matter of patience mm -hmm. now you've been in Hollywood for an awful long time and you and you say in the book that you like Hollywood because of its inclusiveness there's so many different kinds of people mm -hmm. and stuff you also though I mean you are in the spotlight for your for, I mean you do everything you're in the Guinness Book of Records you you've got a makeup line um, you know, you had a, a relationship with a rock star. You're in, you're out in Hollywood all the time. Do you, are you sick of though the other side of Hollywood now, the paparazzi, the the constant that they're after? Some um, part of you. I'm you? such a private person. Mm -hmm. You know, like I live at the top of a hill in a very secluded area. Like I don't watch television. I am sober three years now, and so I kind of a hermit. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't really go out very much. When I do go out, I go to work and hang out with my friends and family. So it's been nice where I don't have to um, invite that that aspect of Hollywood, which I dislike, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, to each their own, you know, I just think it's such a negative thing, you know, so, um, you know, I, I meditate a lot, so I think that gets me through a lot of, like, the invasive questions and stuff like that, um, but in the end, I think, um, if you put importance into, you know, the criticism, and, you know, if I were to get bummed out every time I got voted worst dress, I would probably <laughs> be a miserable person, but instead, laughing it off is a lot easier, yeah. and it's a lot more but better way of life so mm -hmm. yeah